Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Travel and Tourism Podcast, my first season. Very, very excited today. Why? Uh, I worked with this geo many, many, many years ago, about 26 years ago. It was a very, very special time. And then I followed him to another village, you know, for his first season as chief of sports. So this uh, Club Med where I met him was in Playa Blanca, 96, 97 season. Then I went to Otranto, uh, you know, to be with him and a lot of the other gang that came from Playa Blanca to Otranto. And his first season, though, was in Club Med Chefalu in 1992 as a tennis geo. Altogether, he worked for Club Med from 1992 to 2001 in such villages as Paradise Island, La Plaine, Metaponto, Haiti, Hammamet, and Ibiza, just to name a few. Please help me welcome from Florence, Italy, Filippo Falloni, a.k.a. Pippo, Forza Firenze, Pippo... Pippo de la noche. Signore, how are you today? Como stai, people? Oh, thank you, Greg. Very <laughs> well. Okay. <laughs> thank first, you very much. First, let's explain. So I think you're the first, like, true, true, true Italian I've had on this show. You know, 100% Italian, born in Italy. And uh, the song I sang at the at the front, you know, <laughs> is actually a song called Ritmo de la noche. And uh, it's a it's by a group by Mystic. So what happened there is because your name is Pipo and we were working in Playa and before the show, Lulu used to play the song Ritmo de la Noche. But so so I think you said it was Michele who <laughs> who changed the song a bit. Right. And he put Pipo, Pipo de la Noche. And then we all started singing it that season. Correct. Yeah, it's correct. It's correct. It's correct. It was like uh, like because Pipo was a. Uh, nickname no? you know so it was easy and it was uh, uh, the, at, the, at the right rhythm of, of the music so it was easy to convert from uh, yes. from people to the ritmo. To, to, to ritmo yeah yeah <laughs> and, and, very easy. And, and since i've been uh, i knew i was going to interview you for the last week i've been playing that song and all day long i have in my head people <laughs> people de la noche and we could just say that this, this was michele stiano and would you believe, like when we, we were together in 97, would you believe that 26 years later, Michele would still be working for Club Med and as a chief of village? Can you believe it? I believe it because okay. he's still it. Yes. <laughs> Adrenalina pura. All right. Adrenalina pura. <laughs> okay, before we get there, now... Now you, yeah, you're from Firenze or Florence. Uh, you studied at the university there, correct? Yes, correct, correct. Florence, did, university you, and high school. What what did you study at the University of Firenze? Economics. Economics oh, degree. Boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Mm. Okay. Now, so how old were you when you learned to play tennis? Oh, I, I, I learned to play tennis. I was six years old. Really? Okay. Yeah. Really. Is, is it because you were watching it on TV and you decided I wanted to try that? It was, um, uh, yeah, it was both. It was a passion you know it was something that uh, well I, I, I was um i was playing tennis just for fun in front of my house uh, against the wall and from there i say you know i want to play tennis for real who were some of your favorite players back then uh, john macro many years ago oh really you like macro yeah, yeah because he's left-handed like i am yeah, but you were very calm on the courts. Like you, you, you never acted like McEnroe when I saw you play. So you never. No, because I was just you, teacher. So. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't have a temper like he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but the game is another thing to teach. You know. <laughs> okay, so you, yeah, you're so you're living in Florence. So how do you how do you find out about Club Med? Like, where where were you when you found out? What were you doing? So Club Med was at the end of the high school, so. And my my brother-in-law, the son, uh, he was working like a nursery, uh, like a nursery in uh, in Clement, in Hungary, in um, Hungary, Hungary. I don't know how we say, but yeah. anyway, it was in a uh, Rusalka or something like this, in a Clement. And he said to me, "You have to go to the Clement, and you're gonna see his beautiful experience. You you know how to play tennis. They they need a tennis teacher, so you have to try this." And I was trying. I was uh, to the interview in Milan, and it was like it was like a fast love, you know. <laughs> you do the interview. I did the interview, and then it said to me, "Okay, first season, 
you can go right to Cefalu in uh, two months because the season's going to start in two months. So from there, I and I did it, and it, it was for fun. And it became my job. Okay, wait a minute. What? Okay, what was your family member doing in Rusalka? What was his position? Nurse. Nurse. Yeah. In like infirmière, like he was. He infirmière. Was a nurse. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So did you? Ha- so did you have any idea what Chefalu was like? That you were going to one of the crazy, crazy villages for your first season? Did you know? <laughs> no idea. You okay. can't imagine that my my first arrival there. It was uh, I was inside the the tent, you know, inside the the, the the the. It was no shower inside. It was no toilet inside. So I say to the to the to the person that they accompanied me in the in my in my little tent, and I say, where is the shower? Hundred meters from here. Okay. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. So your so your room was kind of like a tent. Yeah, it's a kind of tent. Like uh, how we call this in a in a in a well, we call a, it a, a, a well. Okay, yeah. So this was like we what we call a village de de Cas, right? It was a hut. Yeah, village de Cas. A, a, oh, hut, yeah, a right. hut village. What was the um, the capacity of this village for GMs? Was it like fifteen hundred or sixteen hundred? Do you remember something like that? Thousand and two thousand two hundred the GM. Okay. All right. And this is in uh, Sicily, correct? Yeah. And it was uh, it was an absolutely uh, beautiful experience and uh, and uh, full of people and young people because Cefalu it was a uh, party time. Okay. Now, so you speak Italian. So did you understand what the Sicilians were saying? Okay. Because... <laughs> Because I, I, I didn't know how different the language was till I went to Otranto with you and didn't understand a word. So were you able to understand? I love the Sicilians, guys. Don't get me wrong. But did you have any miscommunications at all? No, me too. I love them. But, but when they start to speak Sicilian dialect, you don't understand a word. Okay. Anybody. Except okay. if, you are, if you are Sicilian, you can understand Okay, so so I guess do you what what uh, what memories are like do you do you have of that first season? Uh, can you tell us anything like? Uh... Of course, I can. I, I can tell you my first season. My French was uh, a disaster because uh, really I thought that yeah because I thought I thought after after French in the school you know you, you think that you speak French like uh, a Frenchman or a French uh, person, but it is not like this because. Uh, they start to speak French very fast. So before to understand something, uh, it was uh, after one month, I start to speak a little bit and understand what they say. So it was, um, I always say, please let me see around the seven or six person that you have to, you know, you have to, to lunch or dinner with GM. So I always ask you to stay with them. Because I absolutely need to speak French to understand. Because uh, the, the thing that, that was very funny that uh, when everybody's smiling, when everybody was smiling, I was smiling or was laughing. I was, I was, even me, I'm laughing because even if they don't understand, I say if they're laughing, it's, it means it, it, it mean, it mean that, uh, it mean that, uh, uh, it was funny. So <laughs> there was, was laughing and uh, I was laughing as well. <laughs> that was very funny. And then it was uh, some uh, something like uh, in um, at the end of the season that uh, I thought that uh, to speak French very well, but I didn't speak anything. And, uh, you know, in Italian and French, they are pretty similar. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, I was uh, at the table with uh, with a f- with French people, and they say to me, "Where are you going?" You know the classical classical question. Where are you going next season? And I say, "I would like to go to ski, but I have to say in French." And I can tell you that in Italian, uh, s- to ski, we say "sciare," "sciare." I say, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty similar to Italian, so. Uh, Par- parlare, parler, I say, sciare, maybe is scie. So I say, ah, ah, je vais scie tout l'hiver. So the people that there was at the table, there was 
I mean, it was <laughs> in the middle of the floor, just laughing so loud that I didn't understand anything. And, uh, and you know what I say. I mean, yes, I yes. Say, yeah. I, I, <laughs> you said, you basically so, said you wanted to crap, <laughs> crap all winter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so from there, I understand how we say ski in French <laughs> because before I, I, I didn't know. So that's, that's what we, that was really funny for me and for the table that there was uh, around me. Well, but the experience, yeah. I mean, it was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, well, what's even what's even funnier is you you didn't go to a ski village your next season. They send you right no. back to che- <laughs> Chefalu, the summer of 93 with Danny Stabietti. Yeah. And oh, you're, yeah. uh, risk, now yeah. you're risk on Seb tennis, so you get a promotion here, right? Yeah, because during the winter, they say to me if I would love to keep going with uh, Club Med, and I say yes. And they say to me, go in Opio for a little while to do a stage. And I, I have been two weeks in Opio and then two weeks in Pompadour because it was a tennis school over there. And then in uh, June, end of May, I back to Cefalu as uh, in charge of tennis. Yeah. Now, Danny Stabielli, was he Italian or was he like Italian American? No, he's a, Danny Stabielli is a uh, is a, a origin, originally was uh, Italian, but but he, he didn't speak anything of Italian because maybe it was a, a an old generation of uh, family that uh, coming from Italy. But okay. he's, he he comes from um, south of France. Okay, he's still there. I still there because I saw. Is, I saw some pictures in Facebook with him, Bernard Giampaolo, and all the many ex chef de village. Okay. Now, uh, as response to tennis, now how many how many tennis geos did you have? You must have had a lot, no? Yeah, we was like uh, eight or nine geos. Yeah. Okay. And then now- me, more than me in charge of tennis. Okay, let me ask you a quick question because I had a when I was chief of sports in Turkey, I had an Italian uh, geo for my tennis, and he couldn't stand when <laughs> when uh, someone would come to the advanced tennis and they were wearing a speedo, okay, a speedo and running shoes. He got really angry, so he'd say, "Oh no, you're you're, you're dressed for the beach. Uh, the beach is uh, that that way, you know." Okay, <laughs> and the person, the GM would say, "No, no, 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 I'm here for tennis." So. Did you uh, did you care that if a GM came in his bathing suit like a speedo, or or did you try to get them to put shorts on? <laughs> oh, it, 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 it always depends on the contest. I mean, but uh, example, you know, Pio, example, in, or, or in Pompadour, or okay. so many you, you cannot dress like that. I mean, okay. with a speedo okay. or something okay. like this. Okay, but. Okay. Uh, even Playa Blanca, you try to to, 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 to to say to them, please put a shirt or put a T-shirt on, and then we try. Yeah. Uh, but, but the most important thing it was a tennis shoes. At least. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no sandals or tongs allowed, right? Yeah, after okay. depends of the contest, but tennis shoes it was a must. Okay, and then uh, so this is interesting because you do just two seasons in Italy, and then your third season they send you straight to. The American zone. So were you were you surprised they sent you to Paradise Island? Did you think you were going to have to work in Italy a few more seasons? No, I was so surprised because you know, I was first I was so happy, of course, because Bahamas and Paradise Island for me was a dream. I was uh, 23 years old, so very happy for this because uh, my English was poor. And so even was a, a, a kind of uh, English lessons for me, you know, because I've been for 13 months, 13, one, three months in um, in Paradise Island. So I was very happy because they proposed to me um, Senegal, you know, uh, they proposed to me um, Les Almadi or something like this. And, uh, I, I remember this. And they say, or Les Almadi or Paradise Island. I say, where is Paradise Island? Because I, I had no idea where it was. And they say to me, in Bahamas. So I say, okay, I, that's my first choice. I want to go there. And, uh, and I have been there for for 13 months. So that it was 13 months. Incredible, unbelievable for me. An experience, uh, uh, even for new geos that you are, you, you are you know so many other geos from different uh, 
countries because uh, you know from Mexico, you know from uh, from Canada, from the United States uh, that I never met before. So for me, it was a beautiful experience, and uh, it was my first choice uh, between uh, Africa and uh, and the Europe and uh, American zone was uh, I say I want to go there. Yeah, and then, so your chief of village is uh, Frédéric Berrier, and you looks like you finally get your wish of a ski village, because I, does he ask you to go with him to La Plaine? Yeah, I follow him, yeah. yeah. Okay. As a ski man. Yeah, and since there's no tennis geo, yeah, uh, t- or tennis in a ski village, you do ski man. <laughs> so, so had you ever done ski man before? No, never done ski man before, but Clamet gave you the opportunity to do a, a stage, and I have been to Chamonix for about three weeks, four weeks, about a month to learn how to do ski man. So, so it was a month there, and then we straight from Chamonix. I have been to La Plaine. But you already knew how to ski, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I even tried to do the the teacher ski teacher for climate, but. Uh, I had no time to do the the, the test with them because uh, it was very complicated. But but uh, I was a good skier, and then in La Plana, almost I I even um, learned to do snowboard. So it was a good place to do ski man. Yeah. Okay. Then so they send you. Okay. So the summer, uh, well, ninety five, ninety six. They send you to Metaponto. I I briefly worked at Metaponto. So to me, this was one of the biggest villages I'd ever seen. And uh, would you agree with that? Yeah. After Camarina, I think is a one of one of the biggest. Yeah. Yeah. Big family village. Uh, you must and your response to tennis. You must have had a lot of a lot of uh, geos under you. And your chief of village was uh, Lionel Benzoni. Correct. Lionel Benzoni, yes. So, what do you you have any memories of this season in uh, Metaponto? Uh, many, many, because uh, before to arrive there, uh, everyone they say uh, it was chief of sport. It was uh, uh, Rico Pauletti that he was uh, my first uh, chief of sport in Cefalu, and they say to me with the other geos that uh, Rico called us to go to Metaponto, but nobody wanted to go there because it was baby club. No? Yes, so, yes. No, no, we want to go to Playa Blanca, Chifalu, we want to go. And then uh, they say, no, you're going to see, you, we're going to enjoy, we're going to enjoy. And then we start to go the season over there. And it was really baby club with a lot of family. So not so party time, but uh, we was a great group of uh, Giros. who was a really great team. And uh, you can imagine with us, it was uh, so many geos that now they are still uh, in the in the climate, that they are chief of village. They are so it was a we was really a great team, and uh, and uh, we, it was a, a great experience over there, even uh, if it uh, was baby club. We we really have a, a great time over there. So even because what... uh, our chief of sport become chief of village there. And uh, I did my first interim as chief of sport at the end of the season. So for for one month. So it was really beautiful experience. Okay. I, I worked in Metaponto for a few weeks before our season in Otranto. So I want to ask you, when you were in Metaponto 95, 96, did they have this thing called Baby Solo when you were there? Of course. That comes okay. to theater. Th- that that is... So- that is the worst thing. Okay, let me just say because I I called uh, Patrizia Moretti. I was in with I was with Marcella. I go I'm bored. We need to work. I get there and immediately somebody hands me a sign. It says Baby Solo. So okay, here for the people listening, this is how evil this thing is. So there's these guys that ride bikes. So whenever I was eating dinner, there's these security guards that ride bikes and they listen for babies crying. When they hear a baby crying, they write the room number down. They bring it to yes. reception, and if you have the misfortune of walking by reception, <laughs> you someone, have to ha- go there. someone hands you a sign <laughs> with the room number and a bell, and you have to go to all the restaurants, clanging the bell, going, baby solo, baby solo. <laughs> and there's so many restaurants. The village is, is massive. It takes forever. <laughs> it, took, it takes yeah, about yeah, an yeah. hour. Oh, Mike, so did you ever get caught doing this? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, and so, me, I, I never, I never do this for. Okay, so you, I mean, <laughs> okay, so you, you knew, you knew to avoid reception at all costs, right? <laughs> yes, I was okay. lucky. <laughs> yeah, they got me good. They, they knew I was, I was there for only a short time, and oh, I, 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 they say, I, yeah, uh, they say he can, he can do it. He can do it. Yeah, yeah, it's so <laughs> awful. Oh my God, baby solo. I still have nightmares about baby solo. <laughs> Uh, even do, even during the show, they stop the show and they yes, say, yes. Baby, so, yeah. <laughs> and because the village is so massive, there's so many parents yeah. and so many babies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm glad I'm glad you you know what I'm talking about because so many yeah, people yeah. don't don't believe me when I tell them this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's true. It's really true. <laughs> Okay, so so here's something interesting. You go to Magic Isle, Haiti, after Metaponto, '96, with Dario Tognelli. Okay, was supposed to have tennis. This wasn't. Um, was this the last season before Haiti closed, or no? It was my my last season. Well, because I know I know uh, Haiti closed. I just don't remember what year Haiti closed. But it, it was almost. I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was because I. I I leave it before from uh, from my EV because uh, Dario keep going to stay there for all the six months. So I think uh, just right after it's closed. Yeah, but because I back to to Italy for a season. Yeah. Did you go? Did you ask to go to Magic Isle, Haiti, or they sent you there? No, they they asked me if I want to go because it was uh, even because it was uh, full of Italians because it was um, a tour over there from Italy that. Uh, that uh, you buy, I think, uh, an accommodation there. So we was a lot of uh, Italian geos, and they asked me to go there after after Metaponto, and uh, I say, why not? It's an American zone, and uh, it's a Caribbean uh, island, even it was very, very dangerous <laughs> at the moment, but... Uh, it was still it was it still was a great experience over there. Okay, then after Haiti, you go back to Italy, Santa Teresa. With uh, now you're with Rico Paoletti, who's now chief of yeah. match. Uh, so did he ask you to go with him? Yeah, he asked me to go with him. Yeah. Okay, and where yeah, where, yeah, where, where, where is uh, where in Italy is Santa Teresa again? Sardinia. Oh yes. Okay. Beautiful village. North North Sardinia. North Sardinia. It's beautiful and um, yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful view, beautiful, beautiful sea, and uh, many, many tennis court. Uh, many, I mean, it, it was um, it was huge village, but it was old village. I think after two years that I had been there, it was closed. It Clement leave the the Sardinia. Okay. All right, but um, was it also a big village, Santa Teresa? It was a big village. It was uh, around thousand GM. Oh, okay. All right, that's not mm. so bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you go, you stay in Italy. You go to Otranto, but first time, so '96. I think you do a interim chief of sports here. Yeah. Where? What, uh, what, what happened there? Where I met? No, because it was uh, I was in Santa Teresa. It was. Uh, I think it was a chief of sports. He, with uh, some, how, how we say in English, that uh, he had a broke leg or broke. Oh, okay. Or broke. okay. So, yeah, he had an accident and he had, so to, an accident, he, yeah. had to go so home. He, he had to go home. Yes. And okay. uh, it was uh, right after uh, August 15, mm-hmm. just before the party, right after the party. You know, okay. in Italy, it's, uh, it's uh, August 15. is a. Uh, it's yes. a party. It's a holiday. It's a big party. It's like uh, July fourteen for the for the, for the French people. So, and I really, uh, they call me like uh, the the night before. Rico, the chief of village, called me in his office and he said to me, "Tomorrow you have to go to Otranto." What do you say? <laughs> yeah, you have to go to Otranto, but you go as a chief of sports. So for me, it was. Um, it was as a promotion, you know, so I see, okay, right away. And uh, and I had been there and I met Lulu. And from okay. there... Uh, what was what was Lulu doing? Like, what was her job there? Lulu was a chief of village. Okay. Oh, she was chief of village. Okay. Yeah, she was chief of village. 
So does she ask you to go with her to Playa Blanca? Yes, because we was me, Michele, and <laughs> and uh, yes. we was together. We say, okay, we go to Playa Blanca. Yes, and so this is where uh, we we first meet. Now tell me, because yes. j- just so I'm not imagining it, do you that season we did there was was uh, was special? No, with the uh, with the uh, people that were there and the talent. Did you find that season special? It was special. It was special for many things, even for me, because. Uh, you can imagine that with my, you know, the, the group of friends of geos that worked two or three or four seasons together before to arrive to Playa Blanca, every meeting at the disco, you know, at the nightclub, we was together before in Metapunto or before. And we say, well, we want to go next uh, season. And everybody, Playa Blanca. And you can imagine that uh, I was the first to go Playa Blanca. So all my Geo's friends that uh, we, we did seasons together say, no, it's not possible. Only you go to Playa Blanca. <laughs> so so uh, it, it was uh, really unexpected because uh, uh, Lulu said to me, we are going, everybody to Playa Blanca. I say, I, I'm coming straight away. So, so it was, uh, and then it was a, uh, even uh, over there was a group special season, great people over there. Uh, I, I only lost the wedding uh, of Lulu because I was. Uh, oh yes, because, uh, because I went back to France for my stage. stage. Yes, uh, yes, I, I I remember the uh, the wedding. She came in this like beautiful horse drawn carriage. Uh, but yes, uh, which which um, village did you do your stage at? Was it Pompadour or Opio? Uh, we was in Opio. Opio, okay, got it. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so unfortunately, you you missed that party. Um, yeah. Let me ask you a question: uh, Did Uncle Larry ever play tennis with you? Yes, of course. He did. <laughs> uh, he, did? he did. He yeah, did. He did play tennis. For, okay. For for a little okay. while, but uh, but uh, okay. I think for two minutes. But <laughs> okay. Did he? Play. Okay. Did yeah. he show? Did he show up in his cowboy boots and speedo and black leather vest? Because that was his. No, outfit. It, it, okay. I I think it was the outfit, something like uh, I didn't remember, but it was not okay. tennis. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> for sure. So, and all your time in Club Med, did you ever ever meet another GM like Uncle Larry? No. Never. Okay. Yeah, he's. Uh, I still have on your news. I don't know what's happening. Maybe now I think it's a uh, pretty old. Uh, what 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 is old? Un- Uncle Larry. Oh no, I, I I heard he passed away. Uh, you know, rest oh, in peace. Yeah, no, uh, I know, rest in peace. I, I that's what I that's peace. what I heard. But mm-hmm. I I talk I talk about him every chance I get because he just um, he added to that season, which was already special. Because uh, special guest, what yeah. a what a char- <laughs> what a character, you know, like oh, what a character, yeah. I mean, he I mean he got me in trouble a lot, but because okay. <laughs> I remember Lulu saying, "Don't anyone ask Uncle Larry to do the GM show," and then one guy canceled yeah, on him right before the show. <laughs> Only Uncle Larry was at the bar, so I took a risk. <laughs> It didn't work. Okay. Yeah. So um, take a risk. Yeah, yeah. I did. It did work, but hey, I took it. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um. So uh, okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. What a yeah. Great season and and the village. So you you've done all these big villages. So he here you are in a very small village. But because the village is so small, everyone knows each other. So all the geos and GMs hang yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Bar. So did you like it because it was small? Yeah, of course we 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 like it because it was small. Because uh, even uh, geos, we know each other for sure. But even GMs, we we really know everyone, and that's the that was uh, the the top of um, of uh, even for the personalization. You know, it was you were was very close to everyone, and uh, uh, I, for this, I like it very much. Yeah. Okay. And was, uh, so if you were with Lulu in Otranto, was, was, uh, Marcella, one of the geos that you were with in Otranto that came to play? Because, uh, I think she knew Lulu before. So d- did you meet, uh, Marcella in Otranto in 96? Yeah. I, I, I knew Marcella in, uh, in Otranto first. It okay. was uh, just for one month for me. Huh? So, yeah. but, uh, okay. I, I, because they know each other over there. So we, we went together after with uh, Lulu because uh, she asking us to go with her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Playa Blanca like has uh, had so many 
like had the picnic it had the margarita ride the margarita kayak <laughs> the margarita walk i mean yeah. uh, it was so many we, margaritas yeah and so many uh like <laughs> chief of villages came out like gus gus was chief of animation became chief of village patrick yeah. Sel selva chief of Sport, became yeah. Yeah. vladimir vladimir who was at the phones became lsm you know down down <laughs> uh so much talent and then you and then we go to uh so i got a, i got an offer to go to tahiti to morea after that i turn it down to go to italy which to me i said ah oh, morea will always be there morea closes but anyway i had so much fun in otranto with you and and everyone because it was my first time in europe first time in, in italy, italy. And it was first time in Italy. I, I didn't understand a thing. I remember that first night. They, <laughs> Everybody was great. They, they split the theater into men and women. They're all shouting at each other, like uh, the football, the football chants. And yeah. I remember, do you remember that the two tennis geos that were there? Uh, two two archery geos. I think it was Fabrizio and, Fabrizio. and Mauricio. Yeah. So yeah, we great. have to introduce ourselves on stage. I'm the only Canadian there. And uh, they say, Greg, Greg, say Forza Barry, say Forza Barry on the microphone. Forza so Barry. stupid yeah. me, stupid me. I'm Canadian. I don't know anything. I say it. Lulu gives me a look. I know I'm in trouble again. Uh, turn. It turns out that, you know, you can't say Forza Barry because you're in Lecce. No, and, because and you're Lecce, Lecce yeah. and Barry have this thing with each other. But I didn't know. I, I, I'm a I Canadian. Guess. What do I know? Oh boy. And then, so you guys stick me, you don't know what to do with me. You stick me at volleyball. And then one day I think I come to you, I think you're with Michaela. I go, Hey people, can I, can I do soccer or football just once? You're like, Oh no, no, no. Are you crazy? They're going to kill you. I said, no, no, I'll, I'll just ref. Uh, no, no. Are you crazy? You can't. So yeah, I never got to you. And you guys, you said, Greg, we're doing you a favor. You'll thank us later because just yeah. in volleyball, it was crazy. Like, they tried to change the score so many times when the team lost, like the Italians were like, no, 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 Gregorio. No, no, no. We erased this. We put this, this is the score. I go, what are you talking about? You lost. No, we didn't lose. What are you talking about? So, and, and I'd go yeah. to maintenance and everything, every time I wanted something from maintenance, they go, Oh, Gregorio, dopo domani, dopo domani. I'm going, wait a minute. You're not, you're going to give it to me the day after tomorrow, not tomorrow. Oh, so yes. So my, this was my first yeah. time. Italy, but what a, it was amazing. Like I didn't understand anything. I, uh, people changing. I sports. can't understand you. I can't understand you. <laughs> but yeah, but what a I had the best time of my life there, you know. And uh, Michele yeah. came uh, with us, you know. I mean, Lulu brought the same team, so yeah, it was a great team. Yeah, it was a really great team. Great and, fun. Uh, yeah, and and this is your first official season as chief of sports, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, so you did you like that season a lot? Yeah, a lot, a lot, really a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a good time, and and because a village, um, do you think there's something special about opening and closing a village, uh, rather than one that stays open all year long? Like, do you like? Did you like when you got to the resort and no one was there, and then you're the last one to leave? I mean, you say at the beginning of the season when nobody's yeah. there. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, I think there's something special yeah. about it's a something special because it's a setup and you see I mean uh, everything very uh how we can say that it, 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 it's strange at the beginning but after mm -hmm. it's even time to know the new geos that you never met before so mm -hmm. it's a is is a, a how to create even a team you know because uh, it's uh, you become to start to have a new team and then uh, and then you see that uh, empty village and then the day after you you always think that oh we are not ready we are not ready we are not ready and then when you open everything is <laughs> everything is done you know it's uh, people's coming and uh, they show they show start so that that's very that's well, very interesting uh, to do it before with empty and then to keep going with a uh, with a full village. I'm glad you mentioned the, the show start because do you remember that big show we would do outside with uh, on the water and, and sailboats and, yeah. and lasers? So during yeah. the summer in Italy in 97, I can't remember what country, but there were people arriving by boat. Albania. Albania. Yes. And one wow. day during the show uh, <laughs> at, at night, 
the helicopter show up, but the GMs thought this was part. They thought it was part of the show. They're like, how did you afford to get helicopters? Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> we was like, we say, hey, did you see that? We are <laughs> the great showman. Only climb my daughter to can do this. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, of course, me. I didn't know what was going on. Okay, okay. <laughs> even me, even yeah, me. Okay. I say, what's going on? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh my! Um, and then, yeah. yeah, then I think Lotto Lotto came that uh, that summer. Didn't they organize a big uh, football tournament too? And uh, we had Swatch. Remember, Swatch was there. They gave us they were trying Swatch, out, yeah. They were trying yeah. instead of bar tickets, we would have a watch yeah. that you charged, and you would pay for your drink with the watch. Do you still have your Swatch? Uh, no, I th- I mean I think I have somewhere, but it's a. Uh... I, I don't remember where is it where is it okay but yeah, uh, I, I, kept I, I keep it for a little while for that's for sure okay yeah no what a what a great season now after Otranto now did you go to St Moritz because you couldn't get because you know what happens in the winter right there's there's no cheaper sports position in ski villages so I see you go with Rico Pauletti to St Moritz uh, ski yeah manager. because yeah. Is it because you didn't, you weren't able to get a season? No, uh, I think no. In a, in a San Maurice, I was um, in charge of restaurant Italian. Oh really? Restaurant. Oh, you were? Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Okay. That's why because uh, Rico said to me, please, um, please help me up there because it's my first season in uh, Switzerland and uh, I don't know so many geos because many geos they are going uh, in uh, Caraiben side or in American zone so. He said to me, I need one place that they stay close to me. I, I know that you have been chief of sport this season before. And uh, so I say, why not? I mean, uh, I love ski. I love mountain uh, ski resorts. So I follow him. And it was uh, this little annex restaurant that was Italian restaurant. And uh, I really, I really enjoyed. And it was a new experience, even in an FMB area, you know, so very very i mean great experience and um i i, I like it that's uh that's uh, i choose it because it was rico Polite, of course the chief of village but it was a great experience and uh and a great time over there yeah okay and then uh, after the ski season you go to hamamet in 97 98 with uh, eric peroni as chief of sports correct yes uh, yes, met, uh where, where is Hamet met again in Tunisia? In Tunisia, Tunisia. Okay, is was this a another uh, hut village, village de Cas, or um, a regular? No, no, it was a uh, it was a huge village, not a little village. It was a family village. It was uh, in a new project of Clamed that uh, they was with uh, a lot of uh, local geos, and uh, because it was a uh, Baratti. Uh, program or something like this, you know, at time, a climate uh, decided to put some uh, different program inside uh, of a new development, and uh, they put modules from, example, if you was uh, in Tunisia, they put more Tunisians, you know, if you was in Morocco, more Moroccans, or if you was, I don't know, in uh, Mexico, maybe they put to, to push more Mexicans. And it was a new project. It was a very interesting to know so many geos or local geos, they really needed to even to, to join climate, to improve themselves. And uh, for us, if we, if we, it was a, a great experience because it was to teach to them how to do geo uh, even they, they they never did it before because it was a lot of first season, so it was local. So you, you try to do you no know, a group person that uh, that they did like climate before. So it was a new experience, new project, but we was inside of this, and it was a uh, it was a. Um, a great experience. It was eight months over there. Eight months, tough, tough eight months because uh, even is very hot over there. But it was a uh, it was a great experience for for everybody, even for me, of course. Okay, and then so you go from one 
you know, one big village to another. Now you're in Camarina in 98, 99, with, back with Rico Paoletti, who's chief of sports. Camarina is where in Italy again? Camarina is, uh, I think, he has been the largest climate in the world. Yes. The hugest in it's the what, world. 2,000 two, two GM, something like that, or just under? Uh, something like this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where, 2,000 where in, GMs. Where in Italy is it again? Uh, in Sicily. Sicily. Okay. And um, south, it, and now south of Sicily. Uh, sadly, I believe it it closed last year. I think. Uh, Fla- family, family, family. It, 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 it's 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 closed now, right? The village, I believe. It, it's, it's closed. Yes. Two I, I years think, oh, ago. Oh, two years. That's right. Two years ago. I know p- people were very sad and upset when when that one closed. So you have good memories from Camarina. Good memories. Uh, Camarina was uh, maybe. The reputation was that like the most difficult uh, climate in the world. It was the most largest. It was the largest. It was the hugest. It was it was the most of everything, but it was the um, the better the better that uh, you can work there because over there, you 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 was chief of sports. Uh, I was chief of sports. If you are chief of sports over there. At that time, I had like 56 geos oh. under me, 56, 57. But it was like uh, you have uh, everything, how we can say everything, to do uh, your best. I mean, you you need a rollerblade. You, you got a 200 pairs of rollerblade in uh, 24 hours. You need, uh, because it was a bicycle over there, professional bicycle example. You have a, you, you miss 20 bicycle, 20 bike. They they send you 20 bike in 40, 48 hours. So, wait, I mean, wait, wait, wait a minute, people. So in this village in Italy, they didn't tell you double the money when you asked for no, rollerblades? No. Okay, okay. Cam, Camarina was, uh, okay. for this, it was incredible. It was uh uh, it, it's true. It's, it's very difficult, but you have the uh, how we can say you have the the things, the right things to work. You know, I mean, okay. uh, you don't miss anything over there. Okay, so you it's have everything t- you need. So it's a tough, demanding village, but if you need something, they give it to you, right? Yeah, because you 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 need to be organized, of course, because it's like uh, if you miss if you miss a thing, you miss all the. <laughs> You know, all the two novel is missing. So well, you well, need yeah. to to be organized day by day, methodic uh, and everything, because if not, poof, everything jump off. Everything. Well, yeah, I, I, I can't mm-hmm. imagine. Like, I think when I was chief of sport, my biggest team might have been 30. I can't imagine another 30 on top of that. Like, I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, even 30, a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but you almost had six, 60. We, we, yeah, we... With uh, everyone with a different uh, things to asking you, you know. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and of course, of course, the first seasons that you know do stuff like they're making out with the girl in the nightclub. You know, you can't do that. You know, I mean, you're always, <laughs> yeah, you're always <laughs> trying to stop someone from doing something wrong. You know. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. I wow. Know. So, and I guess, so I guess they send you there because this is a, a village that makes or breaks you. So I see that. You didn't get broken because now you're stash promo uh, chief of village at at uh, La, La Villette for two months, right? So, uh, so I yes. guess this was like a, a test for you. They wanted to see how you could do in Camarina. Obviously, you did well because now you're a promo chief of village. Uh, so, two months in in uh, La, La Villette. What was that like? No, it was at the beginning. It was um, it, it was in the elder office. So they start to explain to you what you're gonna do when you will be chief of village, and uh, they start to see how you can you can see the different uh, uh, hotels, how they works because uh, we have been like in uh, different hotels around Paris in uh, FMB area, in accounting area just to see how the author works and uh, just what kind of a job it will be when you will be chief of village. Even if you have to be, of course, a leader, even if you had to be 
someone that you have to bring with you or your team, but you start to need to understand the numbers, you know? <laughs> so they want to see how the FMB area has to set up. So different things. So it was a stage with a different area to visit in the hotel and accommodation. So okay. that was, uh, was uh, an experience uh, and um, where we study all together with the author 22, we was at the beginning with 22 promotional chief of village. So after two months, they stopped because it was a problem with uh, in, in the Paris area with uh, our management. So they send us back to the different uh, to the different uh, village to finish our um, to finish our uh, stage because the stage it was not finished and we finished in the different village as the assistant of uh, chief of village. Yes. It was example. Uh, it was uh, it was like uh, each one of us. It was a uh, entertainment team uh, uh, assistant, uh, chief of village. It was chief of sports in Bali as assistant of uh, chef uh, chef de village. And after uh, after one year in different, or after six months, uh, we was in uh, in uh, Vitel to do the last uh, step, the capstone. But it was, uh, as, as you remember, was the September 11th. Yeah. The yeah. Time. So for so, you, so yeah. So after Villette, because I think you're one of the only GOs that worked in this village. So in, in 2000, you go to Ibiza with Chief of Village Jimmy Chishportish, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Yes. So yes. Ibiza. Okay. We all know about the island. So was the village, was it family or singles village? Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's strange because it was a family and a baby club village. <laughs> okay, so how far <laughs> how, how how far were you from? I, I guess the nightlife, uh, like when, where the village is situated, are you far from the town or like where the no, actual we, party is happening? We, everything party was everywhere, so we was close to every to 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 every every corner of the island there was a party time so okay. it was close to to everything so now you but, have to worry uh, about your geos like who are partying that, that's at night correct. okay and then that's showing correct. up yeah. for the power walk at 7 a.m right okay. yeah yeah that, that's correct <laughs> sometimes they do the after hour like uh five or six o'clock and they, they be and they, and they, they come back for on the on the right on the spot where to do power walk or to do something like this without uh, just to do just to do a shower and yeah no no sleep right <laughs> no sleep no sleep you know yeah sleep. I'm wondering why no yeah I'm wondering why Clement decided to make it a family village and not a singles yeah it is strange right like the most no, it party... was it was a family yeah it was a family village but you can imagine that at ten o'clock ten p.m. Uh, the village was empty. Yeah. Nobody around, so you can go out. <laughs> yeah, even even the the real so they was like uh, at 10, 10 p.m. So eleven p.m. Uh, everybody was free. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. And yeah. um, was this one of um, like Jim, Jimmy Chish Chish Partish, Was this one of his last seasons? I mean, I, I I recognize the name and I know, but he's like an old school chief of village, right? Yeah, he's a, he's an old school. It was almost at the end. He did. Uh, okay. I think uh, two or three more years, and then oh, okay. uh, and then uh, and then he back to and now is in charge of uh, uh, all the uh, South uh, Climate Agency tour oh. operators. Oh, okay. yeah, in and the south of France. Yeah, and from Ibiza you go to they send you as interim chief of village in Bali, uh, two thousand yes. two thousand one. So first time in uh, Indonesia. Did you like Bali? Uh, Bali, if if you. Uh, Bali is uh, is 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 not just a great experience; it's a, a mind experience. <laughs> it's a it's really great people, not just geos, but even outside of the of the villages. It's so many fantastic people over there that uh, I still have some friends down there. We write down with each other, so is a is another is another 
kind of life. <laughs> okay, yeah. Beautiful yeah, no, life. Yeah, I, I spent a year in Bintan and I love, uh, yeah. Indonesia. Yeah, it's just something. It's beautiful. Like, yeah, but Bali, it's, I have been to Bintan for a few months. But Bali, it's it's a uh, it's really another thing. It's, yeah. uh, it's a really incredible, incredible. Just to, to go there to understand what is it. And then from there, they send you to the reopening in 2001 of Jerba Ladus, uh, your assistant chief of village to Thierry Bush. Now, was Jerba Ladus closed for renovation? When uh, right now, I think is uh, is open again. Well, they no, in two thousand. In two thousand one, I think you you mentioned that you were there. Ah, to, in two thousand, uh, uh, yeah, to, to I the, the reopening. reopening. Yeah, was yeah, it was yeah, it yeah. Re- was it renovated? Is that why it was closed? It was closed for six months, and it was a reopening. But it was a reopening step by steps because uh, we reopening first the uh, village because it was a village area and a hotel area, so. We reopening uh, for the first three months just the village, and then three months later we open the the hotel that is in the same village. It's the same area, but it was uh, is like some village. There was like this. I don't know if you remember, but it was like even Camarina. It was the hotel side, uh, a bungalow side, and in Jerbaladus, it, it, it was the same. Is the same because he has. Uh, a hotel area and a village area. Even after, if everybody can join the same restaurant or the same place to go for sports or for or for the or for the shoes. Okay, Thierry uh, Bush, uh, He was was he Belgian or French? Because he was my chief of sport in '96. I I think he was Belgian. No? Uh, I think he's Belgian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, he's Belgian. Mm-hmm. He's Belgian. Okay. Now, so yeah, Jerba finishes up your time in Club Med, but you did mention something to me in, in your pre-interview that you, you studied at uh, Cornell. Is this correct? It's correct. It's correct. But uh, uh, it's a year later because uh, before I worked and then I started studying. So but what, it, what, it, 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 what, what be, made you be, choose be, to go to Cornell though? When because uh, I did my new career in you know, in hotel in hotel uh, area and mm-hmm. I worked with an uh, international company in Italy for six years I have been general manager and at the end of the, my my at the sixth year they say to me uh, they proposed to me to to do that uh, Cornell university because it was a general program like a master degree and uh, and i say of course but i didn't know very well at the beginning what it was cornell and then you realize that that uh, cornell is a a great university you know especially in a hotel area hotel area administration of course and yes. uh, and and that's why i have been there i start uh, it was in the pandemic uh, moment so i did like a full five months four months in uh, uh, online and then we do the last uh, capstone uh, in uh, in itaca okay so i i work you know i've been working for uh, a university here in montreal for like 15 16 years but what's it like so you studied at the university of florence so what's it like going back to school but now you're you're learning in english was it was it uh, easy for you was it hard it was very hard, but <laughs> but uh, it was no, it was hard, but uh, but uh, but it was I mean uh, even uh, in my area of uh, tourism area, so uh, many things that it was uh, it was easier to understand, and uh, in English was for me of course more difficult, but uh, at the end. Uh, at the end, I think uh, I did what uh, was very difficult for me at the beginning. Okay. So you mentioned uh, your. So are you currently a, a general manager of a hotel? Yes. I'm Is a it... general manager in Florence right now, in hotel in Florence. And at this uh, hotel in Florence, the name is uh, Lungarno Vespucci, correct? Correct. 
correct. Okay. It's a it's a four stars. Oh. Hotel is a um, is in, in in the downtown of Florence, down the river. So it's a beautiful boutique hotel, and uh, and uh, now I'm uh, I'm a general manager there. Yeah. Okay. So if any XGOs are traveling, we could stay at this hotel. Correct. Yes, correct. Okay, it's it's not like a it's not like a village de casa Chevalu, right? No, it's no, a nice, no. nice. Okay, nice it's, four star. Okay. It's pretty different. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the door's locked. Their safe's in the room. All right. <laughs> nice memories. Nice memories. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, speaking of memories, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to ask you, um, who do, who did you enjoy working with? Like, you know, before you were like. Chief of Village, Chief of Sport. Like who? Who was there? Any Chief of Villages that you got along with that you liked? Yes, my Chief of Village that uh, we keep going to have a beautiful friendship is uh, Rico Pauletti as a uh, best of my and best you, of. You're, are you still in touch with him? In touch. We uh, even if he, he now he's working for a international company in uh, Mauritius. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So each time he's back in Italy because he comes from Italy and he lives close to Florence, and uh, we see each other. So. Oh, uh, nice. It, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Very great. Nice. Yeah. And uh, who else did you like working with? The Geos. Mm -hmm. Geos was uh, one of um, of uh, that we still uh, in uh, in touch is. Um, Gianluca Gelarducci, that he was uh, even uh, human resource in Milan right after his career in the village. And uh, we're still in touch. And uh, of course, uh, after I had another one that uh, was a German uh, geos that uh, we met together in, uh, in Paradise Island, uh, that the name was Olivier. And now I, I didn't have news anymore but uh we had a beautiful friendship for many years nice okay yeah these are some good memories is there yeah, very good. is there anything like because because you live in in florence and you're still in you know hospitality and tourism is there anything that you that you miss about club Med? like do you ever think about that that i that um, i miss uh, 25 years less okay <laughs> <laughs> Because I can tell you that I miss, of course, uh, the party that uh, we did together, even with a few things sometimes, and the people that you met, uh, I meet all all uh, all around the world. That's I miss it a lot because before it was very easy to keep in touch with people, to spend six months with someone, even if you didn't see him. Like uh, between me and you now, it's like uh, we. We worked together like uh, two months ago because it yeah. was uh, so great memories, even if it's 25 years ago. But you always have some uh, uh, some memories of each one that we meet in our uh, in our uh, careers in a uh, club med or in our job in a club med. That's I miss it a lot. Yeah. So you're so you're 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 glad you you did it. You wouldn't change much, right? Like. Like your your no. progression, like you're you're glad you you're glad you had the experience, right? If uh, if uh, if I am now where I am is uh, also thanks to the club med, of course. Okay, yeah. Um, do you ever do you ever see anyone's uh, application, like job application, where you are? Does anyone ever work for club med, or are you are you the only one? I, if they come to visit me in uh in vacation. Well, no. Say they're applying for a job at your hotel. Like, do you ever you ever see a resume or a CV that has that they worked at club? No, at? no, oh, okay. never, not yet. No, not yet. No. Okay. Not yet. No. Yet. We, well, we know how hard the these people work, right? So the GSO, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know they can know. handle it. <laughs> we know. All right. Know. Well, th this has been so good to talk to you again. But I I don't want to let you go unless I unless I uh, I make sure. Like, is there anything that I have? forgotten to ask you is there anything you else you wanted to say before we go because uh, i want to make sure i get everything 
did I forget to ask you something? <laughs> or something? no, I think I think we made uh, we made the, the long story of uh, both of us even. Okay. So. <laughs> well, yeah, there are so many memories. You know, so many memories. Some, some yeah. we can't say. Some we can't. But you know, you know what I do remember. I remember one memory uh, in Otranto. There was a French guy on the maintenance. He was first season. He was from a very small village in France. And I remember that when the geo started to leave near the end of the season, he started crying. <laughs> <laughs> because we got so attached to the the people there and by then we were like me and you were like we had been in club Med a, a few years we were uh you know we were hardened we were immune but i still remember yeah. this sweet boy crying whenever and he <laughs> and he, he was so fed up he was crying he's like i'm not coming to any more departures Je ne supporte plus les départs. you know because he wouldn't stop crying <laughs> so, so but yeah, this yeah. is one of my favorite memories from Otranto because yes. uh, he reminded me of, you know, this, like, enjoy this moment in time, you know, you, it might not last, you know, so be, be thankful you have this moment, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, beautiful. That, yeah. that, that and McKaylee at Chippendales in Otranto is, some of my, is that my, my favorite, my favorite memory. Okay. <laughs> Chippendales. And, uh, what, yeah, and Joe Bonotti. Giovanotti's imitation of Michele doing <laughs> Chippendales, I still remember, I cherish. Okay, so yeah, shout, out, shout out Giovanotti, Laura Miniti. <laughs> you are still, still, uh, he's still working. I mean, he's, he's working in Las Vegas or in Los Angeles or somewhere. He's living yeah, there. Los, uh, mm. Yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, mm. well, and Michele, I hope to have on, I hope to have on the show. Okay. I've reached out oh. to him. So I hope, Michele, you come because you have uh, to. Yes. <laughs> I love the I love the guy like like everyone you know so uh, what a character too. Yeah. Oh, Filippo, Pippo, uh, thank you so much eh, for sharing your story with us here today. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Greg, thank you to you to you contact me and to give me the possibility the opportunity to walk to talk with you in the uh, in your program. Uh, it is a uh, beautiful for everything. Great. Oh, thank Thank you. We're, we're going to say goodbye, but don't don't hang up right away. OK, stay on the line a bit more. So everyone from Florence, Italy, that was Signori Filippo Felloni. So let's say let's say goodbye to everyone. Filippo, say ciao. Arrivederci. Something. Give me something. <laughs> ciao a tutti. Ciao, ciao. Like at the end of uh, like at the end of the show. See you later, alligator. Ciao, ciao. Ah, Nice. Bye, guys. See you all later.